search for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. Worn out from the same old fight. We fall around the things we know just ain't right. Oh, there's a better life. Yeah, there's a better life. Time to open the service with prayer this evening. We've had a request given in for three girls that are missing in Ohio. Let's pray for them that uh, they'll be found safe. Does anyone else have any spoken requests? All right. Sister Lucas. Brother Charlie. Any others? All right. All those on the radio. Oh, Lord. If there's no others, just stand, go, Lord, in prayer. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time we have to come before you this season. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that's made a way for us.
it's good to be back in God's house again this evening. It's good to see Brother and Sister Ball back here again tonight. It's good to see Sister Taylor. Uh, it's good to have Chris back with us again tonight after after he gave his heart to the Lord this morning. You know, uh, we, we all want to see our full church family back together. We want to see uh, uh, Sister Audrey. We want to see the McDowell's back with us. Uh, but the land's got to be healed before that can happen because this stuff that we're dealing with is not going away on its own. But if the church will have faith in the word like Chris did this morning, uh, we'll see things start to turn around the country again. Uh, I was praying this morning about what to say this evening, and Brother Charlie got up here and said pretty much the same thing, but I know better than uh, to try to change what God laid on my heart to say. Um, it may sound like we're getting repetitive, but I believe that God's trying to get a message across to the church that we need to return to him to see the land healed. It's, it's not just the coronavirus. It's uh, the politicians that are using it for their gain. It's the uh, domestic terrorists tearing everything up. We can change that, but it's all going to begin with us. Uh, the judgment has to start here before it can go out and, and fix the communities like we need it to. But, um, We've had some birthdays this here recently. Uh, Olivia's birthday was yesterday. She turned nine. Uh, Brother Baker, uh, we just celebrated his birthday, and Sister Anna, we celebrated her birthday. Uh, we're going to sing happy birthday to him. All right, that's, everyone's had a birthday recently. Stan, we'll sing happy birthday to you. This time we'll receive our offering for us as you come. Brother Zach, if you will, ask the Lord bless the time of giving. faithfulness and giving. Uh, I'd like to mention uh, Robert out there too. It's hard to remember somebody that's not in here with us, but he, he's faithful to come when he can, and we appreciate him too. At this time, we're going to ask Sister Shelton, Sister Harris, Sister Brady to come in and song. There's all. 
y'all, we're going home. And this isn't where we belong. We should have known that before all these troubles started, but uh, this just brought it even, even more to light. Uh, we're, we're going to the place where we belong, and there's not going to be any strife, any trouble there. Uh, we're going to be with the one who saved us. This time we're going to give the service to the pastor, Brother Shelton. Amen. Let's give God a hand of praise and love and appreciation. Because of him, we can say this world's not our home and that we're going home. Amen. Anybody ever been on a trip somewhere a long way off? And <clears throat> But you count those miles and you can, you're starting to get back close to home and it feels so good. You know you're almost there. Well, that's where we are here now spiritually. We're almost there. Somebody said that song says, I can see the lights of home. We're almost to, to dock on the shores of sweet deliverance. And there we're going to be with the Lord forever. I'm telling you, it's worth every mile of the journey. Somebody said it's so hard serving the Lord. Well, not if you serve him the right way, it's not. If you sink the boat, if you slay the oxen, if you got your heart made up, your mind made up, your heart's fixed, I'm going on with Jesus. It's not hard living for the Lord. What makes it hard living for the Lord when you don't have both feet in the boat? When you don't have both, both hands in his hand. That's when it's hard trying to serve the Lord. When you want to court the world and court God at the same time. That makes it hard trying to serve the Lord. But when you're sold out and you're surrendered to God. I know we have hardships. And I'm telling you it's not a burden to serve the Lord. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a burden to serve God. It's a joy to be born again and to serve him. Can you say amen? Appreciate the wonderful service this morning. I told, I told him after service, boy, I just felt a liberty here in this house this morning. And I appreciate this young man gave his heart to the Lord today. That's a wonderful thing. We could have go, gone home, not ever come back to church again, going on to glory and just shout and celebrate through eternity over this one soul that got saved this morning. Amen. I'm glad God's in the saving business. If you have your Bibles, let's go to Mark chapter 11 tonight. Now, I, I always study and I pray and I seek God. I, I earnestly do. And uh, I work on an outline. I prepare an outline. Sometimes I preach without one, but typically I prepare one and work on one. And then I, I go over it. You, you teachers do that. You, you get your outline, then you go over it. You study it. And it don't do good because when you get to study it, you have another thought and another thought. Most of my sermons start out about 12 minutes. Then after I studied a few times, it's like an hour and a half. You just have thoughts, things. I, got to, I need to get that in there with it. Anybody else do that? And uh, I'm glad God's trying to talk to us and help us. Mark 11, <clears throat> verse 22. Good to see all of you in the house of the Lord tonight. We love each and every one of you so much. It's so good to have the balls back with us. We was talking about that today. Just a joy. Just a joy to see them back with us. And just a wonderful thing. And. We're just counting on the day when everybody can get back to church and those that can't come and those that won't come. Did I say that right? Those that can't come and those that don't want to come. We want to see them all back in church. Some can't be here. Some want to be here but can't be here. Some can be here but don't want to be here. And this is church to church across the nation, I'm sure. But I'm glad to be here tonight, Brother Charlie. What a wonderful thing it is to be in the house of God. Amen. I'm not being ugly. I'm just telling the truth. Mark chapter 11, verse 22. And Jesus answering saith unto him, it's on our sign out there, have faith in God. I wish I had read this in the Amplified before I had Sister Angela to change the sign for us. The Amplified says, have faith in God constantly have faith in God constantly that means at all times have faith in God let's pray father we're glad to be here tonight thank you for the opportunity to be called children of God thank you for the privilege of being saved being washed by the blood I thank you for the wonderful spirit here this morning Lord and I pray that you'll just help us now again tonight Lord, you were so gracious to touch each and every one of us today. 
Lord, I need that help again this evening. Would you just let it be easy preaching tonight? Thank you for the soul and souls that we believe that were saved this morning. We pray for those in the house of God and those watching online tonight. We thank you for this local family of God. We thank you for the body of Christ, the bits and pieces of that body around the world. But I also celebrate this local body of Christ, Lord, that make up a part of that larger body. We pray for those not able to be here tonight. We pray for those I know that are watching online right now that would love more than anything to be in the house of God. I pray that you'll touch them and bless them richly tonight. Bless those that are able to be here now, Father. I pray that this word would challenge us and help us. And we'll all continue to go forward with you and have faith in you. Father, we'll give you the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. amen. Let's give him one more hand of appreciation tonight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Don't you miss, don't you miss when we do the, the congregational numbers and you, we ask each one to go around and shake hands and fellowship with each other. I miss that, don't you? I miss being able to shake hands. And I miss being able to hug necks. And uh, we're just praying and believing that God's going to help us keep all of us safe and just help us through this time. I want to talk to you for a little while tonight, and if you'll help us for a little bit. If you don't help us, I'm going to preach a long time. And if you do help us, I still might preach a long time. I want to talk to you on this thought, the call for faith. The call for faith. We can find throughout the life of Christ that his chief appeal to all of those who came in contact with him was for them simply to believe. Of all the things that Jesus ever asked in the Word of God, the first and last was always to have faith, to believe in God. Christ knew that it was faith that lay behind life. And that faith formed the character and the discipline in a man or woman's life. When Jesus came to this earth, he divided men and women into two classes. He divided that first class into those who believed. And the second class was those who did not believe. I wonder which class we fit in here tonight. Are we of that class who have faith in God and believe in his word? Or we are of that other class that does not believe in God or His Word. We can find throughout the ministry of Christ here upon this earth that when anyone came to Him for help, when anyone came to Him with a need, whatever the need may be, uh, no matter how simple or how extreme it might have been, uh, we find that Jesus always called for them to have faith in God and to believe in Him. The Bible said after he came down from that mount of transfiguration and saw that multitude there gathered around his disciples. The Bible said one of those in that multitude came to Jesus and said in Mark chapter 9, verse 17 and 18, he said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. And wherever so he taketh him, he teareth him up. And he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. The Bible goes on and says in verses 21 through 23, And he asked his father, How long is it ago since this came unto him? And he said of a child, In other words, my son's been like this since he was small. And the Bible said, and oftentimes it cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But that father said, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, if thou canst believe, if you can have faith, all things are possible to him that believeth him. Here we find the scriptures coming into life, what Jesus said in John 10 and 10. 
that the thief cometh but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have life more abundantly. The demand from Christ to this father uh, whose child was in such great trouble uh, was for him to believe, uh, to have faith in God. The Bible said Jesus healed that child that day. Uh, that old devil tried to destroy him. Uh, but because of this father's faith in the Lord, uh, he believed that Jesus could heal his son. Uh, and Jesus did. We find this same faith in Mark chapter 5 when we read there uh, of that woman with the issue of blood. Uh, you know the story, not going to preach long on this point and move on, uh, but the Bible said she had suffered 12 long years uh, uh, with this bloody flux and had been to doctor after doctor and tried this and tried that. I'm telling you, in those days, uh, uh, those doctors didn't practice the modern medicine that we do today. In those times, I mean, they put those folks through the ringers trying to help them get better. The Bible said she went from one doctor to another, spent everything that she had, but rather than getting better, she's getting worse and worse. But then we see something wonderful happen in her life. So we see faith arise in this sick woman. And she believed if I can get to Jesus Christ, he's going to be able to help me. I tried the doctors and it did not work. I tried my money and it did not help. But if I can get to where Jesus is, if I can touch just the hem of his garment, I know that I can be made whole. The Bible said this little sick woman, she pressed her way through that crowd to get to Jesus. And when she laid hold of his garment, virtue went out of him and she was healed instantly. Jesus stood still. Jesus stopped uh, among all of those people. Uh, and he said, who touched me? Uh, I'm telling you, faith can touch God. Uh, I said, faith can get the attention uh, of the Lord. Uh, those disciples didn't understand. They said, what do you mean, who's touched you? Uh, there are throngs of people here. Uh, no doubt people grabbing hold of him, reaching out to him. Uh, he said, but somebody touched me by faith. Uh, somebody believes in me and the Bible said that Jesus healed her that day in verse 34 he said daughter thy faith had made thee whole go in peace and be whole of thy plague you listen to me Jesus was not concerned with who she was he didn't even ask what her name was he didn't ask who she belonged to he didn't care about her position in life he was not concerned where she was from but it was her faith that brought her in contact with him and it was her faith that made her whole I'm telling you Jesus is just looking for somebody that will believe in him and his power to do the impossible in our lives. Somebody give him praise tonight. He's going to heal you, Brother Zach, because Brother Zach's waiting on God. He's believing God. He's believing God for a miracle. I'm telling you, God can heal hurt arms. Can you say amen? God can heal of cancer. Can you shout amen? God can heal heart problems. Amen. God can heal bad nerves. God can put broken homes back together. Is there anything impossible with God? If we can believe, all things are possible unto us. <laughs> Lift your hands and give him glory tonight. My God. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. If we can believe in God, we can have faith in Jesus. The Bible said it doesn't take a whole lot of faith. We can have faith like the size of a grain of mustard seed. Anybody ever seen a mustard seed? One of our girls had one. Maybe Anna Grace, somebody at the house had one. Sister Shelton has one. I mean, it's a tiny, tiny seed. 
But they tell me that when you put it in the ground, when it comes up, it'll grow into a great big bush, a great big tree. He said, if you can have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, yonder be thou removed. What he's saying is this. He's not saying to go to the mountains, point at a mountain, and tell it to be moved. He's trying to show us that if we can have just a small amount of faith in him, he can do the impossible. He can do things that are not possible for you and I to accomplish on our own power. Amen. To blind Bartimaeus sitting on the roadside. Jesus said in Mark 10 and 52, I feel the Lord here tonight. He said, go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way to the two blind men found in Matthew 9, 28 through 30. Jesus said, Believe ye that I'm able to do this. They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. I want you to notice what is said here. He said, be it unto you according to your faith. He never said it's a question of his power. He never said it's a question of his ability to heal because there is no question to his power. There is no question to the ability of the Lord to do anything. I'm telling you, a young man can be in a terrible motorcycle accident. He can be in the hospital without much hope. Amen. But a father can believe that Jesus can heal his son and the Lord of glory can walk in that hospital room and everything turn around overnight. I'm just telling you, friend, it's not a matter of his power or his ability. It is a matter of whether you and I can believe that he's got the power to do it and he has the ability to accomplish anything in our lives. Come on, lift your hands and give him praise tonight. Like we're going to have a little church around here this evening. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, be it according to your faith. And according to your faith, be it unto you. He can do it, can he, Brother Baker? Matthew 28 and 18, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Luke 1 and 37 said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Mama, it was not a matter of whether he had the ability to heal them. It was not a matter whether he was still the great physician and had the power. But it was a matter of whether they had enough faith. If they could believe, he could do it. In other words, did they have faith in his ability? Did they practice faith in the power of Jesus to do what they asked him to do? The answer to the question is yes, they did. And their eyes were open that day. They believed Jesus. Jesus could heal them. They believed Jesus could do what no man on this earth could do. And because of their faith, now they can see. And now they're following Jesus. I'm telling you, there's still a call for the church to believe in the power and the ability of the Lord of glory to do the impossible in our lives. Oh, God. I'm looking for Brother Zach to stand up and testify. There ain't nothing wrong with my arm anymore. God, heal me. God, touch me. I'm telling you, God can do it. I said, God can do anything if we can have faith in Him. Just like these men and women who came to Jesus, they came in need of His help. They came in need of His divine head. Every one of us in this house tonight, all of those watching online tonight, we all have needs that only Christ can supply. 
We're all dealing with things that only God can help, that only God can fix, only God can move. We're all dealing with situations that are beyond the power of man, that are beyond our own ability, our own knowledge. But I'm telling you, just as he demanded faith of those that he helped and he healed and he saved while he was here, Jesus is still looking for that kind of faith for somebody to believe in him for somebody to step out on nothing and say I know it may look impossible to mankind but I still believe that God works in the realm of the impossible and God can do anything if I can only believe it <laughs> hallelujah come on church lift your hands and love him tonight how many God's ever moved in faith in your life? You just believed him. You just believed him. I'm telling you, that boy is still alive today. I said that boy is still alive because that father had faith in God. God walked in that hospital room, touched that boy, and made everything all right. God can do anything. I'm not telling you something you don't already know. I know you believe that. But sometimes when the storms are raging, sometimes when things are going the wrong direction, sometimes we just need a reminder that God is still God, that he's still on the throne, that he's still alive and well, and that he's well now able uh, to meet our every need <laughs> for man to be saved for man I felt God here so good today in this service for man to be saved for man to be healed for man to be delivered for men to be helped for men to be brought out for prayers to be answered. Christ is looking for faith. And God always moves in our faith. The Bible said in his own hometown there uh, that he was not able to do many mighty miracles uh, because of their unbelief. They didn't believe he was the son of God. They didn't believe he could heal their sick uh, except for just a few we read in other places where they brought all their sick to him and he healed them all. That's what the Bible said. He didn't leave anybody behind. Where he found faith, he worked in miracles. Where he found faith, he proved that he is the son of a living God. I'm telling you, our faith in him will still move heavens and earth. Our faith in him will still move God to move on our behalf it's never a matter of his power or his ability to perform Romans 4 and 21 said in being fully persuaded that what he had promised uh, he was also able to perform our faith is in his power our faith is in his word our faith is in his ability for him to do what we ask him to do according to his will. He said in Mark 11 and 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. It's a matter of believing that when I pray for healing, I, I believe God's going to heal me. Come on now. Listen to me. You may pray tonight for God to heal you. And you may wake up still sick in the morning. And the devil will come and say, God may help others, but he's not going to help you. But you keep on praying that prayer of faith. I said you keep right on believing. When Jairus come to Jesus to have his daughter healed. When the news come to him that your daughter's dead is too late. Jesus said, have faith in God. Keep right on believing. If you keep on praying and keep on believing, you're going to see the mighty hand of God move. I said God will do it again.
Don't forget me, saith the Lord, for I have not forgotten you. Don't lose sight of me, saith the Lord, for my eyes are upon you. I am looking for your faith. I am looking for you to trust in me again, not only with your mind, but with your whole heart. If you will trust in me, I will move. I will show you again and again that I am the Lord. Have faith in me, saith the Lord. And I will prove to you again that I am your Lord. Chains and honor God tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Jesus said, keep on believing. Have faith in God. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you shall receive them and ye shall have them. Faith can save our lost family members. Faith can heal our sick bodies. Faith can work out our financial needs. Faith can make a way where there is no way. Faith in God can keep us safe through the storm. God help me to live by faith. God help me to walk by faith. God help me to pray a prayer of faith. To lay hold of heaven by faith. God help me to build myself up in the most holy faith. To have faith in God constantly. And know that God has the ability and the power to move for me. And again, then again we'll see the miracles of God. Then again we'll see the wonder-working power of God. Then again we'll see the mighty hand of God move. Somebody said, well, I've never really seen faith in action. Well, we witnessed it here this morning. That young man got saved by faith. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That young man was saved because he believed that if he repented, God had the power to forgive him. And God had the power to save him. And so he did. God can move the heavens for us again. We'll see the wonderful works of God in our lives and in his church. We have to realize that we all establish our own boundaries of faith. The question has to be raised here. If all things are possible to them that believe, then why don't more Christians receive more from God? And why do so many Christians live such barren lives? Well, the answer to this question is simply this. We establish our own boundaries. How many realize here tonight that we are dealing with two worlds here that we live in? We live in a physical world, and we also deal with the spiritual world. The physical world is that environment in which our bodies exist here and in which we have our five senses, our sight, our smell, our taste, our hearing, our feeling. This is the environment in which most people live. And unfortunately, this is the environment uh, that too many Christians live in as well. You listen to me. Uh, as long as we follow these natural senses, uh, if we live by our feelings, uh, we're never going to understand the spiritual realm uh, and the spiritual things of God. This is why we declare it so often and say it so many times that we do not live by our feelings. I said we do not live by how we feel. We don't live by our senses. We don't live by what we see. But we live by faith in God. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now I've heard it said through the years over and over, you know, by folks when it came to needing help from the Lord, I just don't feel like God is hearing me. I just don't think that it's going to work out. It just feels like it's never going to get better. It just sounds like it's getting worse. 
I've heard it said it does not look like there's any way or any hope. But the Bible reminds us in Romans 8 and 8, they that are in the flesh, those that live by the flesh, those that, that walk in that natural, earthly, physical environment and live by that, they cannot please God. I'm telling you, that's always the flesh trying to talk. The natural man, the carnal man, that one who lives by his feelings, his senses. According to the Bible, they will never receive anything from God. The Bible said in Romans 8 and 5, They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. I'm telling you, when we come to Jesus Christ, He demands our simple childlike faith. He just wants us to believe in Him. He just wants us to step out on nothing uh, and stand on His Word uh, and believe that what His Word says. Uh, listen, it may go against everything else uh, in this world. Uh, it may go against everything we've ever been taught. Uh, it may go against our five senses. Uh, but the Lord wants us to come to Him with faith. Uh, and without faith, uh, no man should expect to receive anything from God. In Mark chapter 4, when those disciples were in that storm, the Bible said that they see that, that great storm out there and they become afraid. They feel the winds and the waves bashing against their ship. They hear the thunder and the lightning and they're overwhelmed with fear. But you notice what Jesus said in verse 40 after he calmed the storm, after he laid the winds down. Jesus said, why is it that ye are so fearful? Why is it that ye have no faith? Listen to me, whether the winds were howling, whether the storm was severe, or the storms had laid down, Jesus never left them. I said he was with them through the storm, but they got caught up in their feelings. It don't feel like we're going to survive. It does not look like we're going to make it, rather than their faith in Jesus. Let me tell you something, it doesn't matter whether the storm's raging or or not if he's on board that ship I've got to believe he's going to see me safely through to the other side amen walking by faith is the avenue into the unseen faith has often been called the sixth sense because it deals with the spiritual realm many people cannot exercise faith because they're always trying to reason everything out. They're trying to figure it out in their mind. I'm telling you, God is higher than us. God is greater than us. His ways are past finding out. I'm telling you, we don't understand everything about God. But what I've got to believe is that He is God. I've got to have faith in Him. And He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. And if people can't exercise faith because they try to reason it out, they want to see it, they want to feel it, they want to touch it, and if they can't, then they don't believe it. Doubting Thomas had this attitude when he was told that Jesus had risen from the dead. John 20 and 25, he said, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe my my has there ever been greater words of such unbelief unless I can see it unless I can touch it unless I can hold it I refuse to believe it that's why we see such a lack of miracles among the church today that's why we see such a, a, a lack of the wonder-working power of God because people won't say it from their mouths, but the way they live, their lives say, I really don't believe God can do it all. The Bible said in John 20, 26 through 29, and after eight days again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. 
Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst. Can you imagine being in that upper room, being there, they're afraid. Amen. Nobody knocked at the door. Nobody said, let me in. And all of a sudden, Jesus was just there. Isn't that just like Jesus? I'm telling you, when we're afraid, when we don't know what to do, I'm telling you, Jesus will show up. I said, all of a sudden, he'll let you know, I'm never very far away. I was here the whole time. Jesus showed up in their midst. And he said, peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, and yet have believed. The Bible said in Hebrews 11 and 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I'm telling you, I may not see it yet. I I may not feel it yet. I I may not hear it yet. But I must know, not only is God able, but I must believe that He will. I, I must believe that my prayers do not fall on deaf ears. But He hears me when I pray. When I pray according to His will. And by faith, God will move. And God will do the impossible for us today. Somebody give him a hand of praise. Oh, my grandfather used to say how we need a bumper crop of faith. We need faith in this hour. In closing here quickly, in Mark chapter 5 again, Jairus' daughter is dead. And Jesus, Jairus said it's too late, Lord. She's already gone. He just wanted Jesus to come and heal her. But now he receives news that it's too late. She's dead. Jesus said, just have faith. Just keep on believing. Listen, it went from bad to worse. Bad enough she's sick, but now she's dead. It went from nearly impossible now to it is impossible. But Jesus said, don't lose your faith. Don't lose it now. It may look impossible. It may sound impossible. It may feel impossible. But just keep right on believing. The Bible said in verses 38 through 40, And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, this commotion, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth him. And the Bible said, and they laughed him to scorn. You know why they laughed? Because they were looking at the dead girl rather than looking at Jesus by faith. The one who's got the power to raise this dead girl. But the Bible said, but when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel and them that were with him and entered in where the damsel was lying. The Bible shows us he was not going to raise this girl from the dead uh, until all the doubt was removed. Verse 41 and 42 says, And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha quimi, which is being interpreted damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked. For she was the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. I'm telling you, when the doubt was gone and there was nothing but faith left in that room, then Jesus performed a miracle. I'm just telling you, as the church today, we've got to shake loose from this doubt. We've got to shake these old voices out of our head and have faith in our heart again and believe that God can and do anything that we need him to do. All the doubts got to be removed. 
all the doubt that hinders the miracles. And we must believe God. Christ has never failed us. Christ demands that same kind of faith today. We must remove all doubt. And we must once again believe in the power and the ability of God. If we can believe, Christ is going to see us safely through this storm. I'm believing for a testimony of God's healing power. That man of God right there. Have faith in God. Sometimes we talk in doubt. And maybe we don't even recognize we're doing it. We say they better, oh come on, we've all done it. They better get the doctor quickly. They better get it fixed right now. They better do something right now. But sometimes it pays to wait on the Lord and believe God that God, and I mean God, can, if God can take a withered hand and say, stretch forth thine hand. And the Bible said that hand was restored. That word restored means it was made as if it was never that way to begin with. That man's hand was withered. He couldn't use it. It hindered him. But now Jesus, because he believed. How do you know he believed? Because he obeyed by faith. Jesus said, stretch forth your hand. And by faith he reached out that, that withered hand to Jesus. And, and the Lord healed that hand. I'm telling you, he can heal that man's arm. Never has there been a greater time for the church to show forth her faith and trust him during this time of pandemic. There's never been a greater time for us to believe God and have faith in God. As long as he's on board our ship, the ship's not going to go under. This doesn't mean the storms are not going to come. That doesn't mean we're not going to get COVID. I pray a hedge around my family, around this church. I, listen, I know Christians who've had it, who are people of God, who live by faith. But I've also watched God bring them right through that storm. Come on, say amen. Somebody said, well, if you get sick because you didn't have enough faith. Well, tell that to Elisha. Elisha was one of the greatest men you'll ever read about in the Word of God. Performed 32 miracles. And then one posthumously when he died, uh, his bones in that grave, they threw a dead boy in that, in that grave, touched the bones of Elisha, and the fire lit up in him. There was fire in those bones. Uh, and that dead boy had come back to life, uh, got up out of that grave, went preached everywhere. Uh, I just touched some bones that were on fire, and I was made whole. Somebody said, if you have enough faith, you won't never get sick. Well, tell that to Elisha who got sick, the Bible said, and he died. I told you of the preacher one time years and years ago. He used to preach if you, had, if you got sick because you didn't have enough faith. That's ridiculous. That's not, that's not Bible. That's not biblical. He said, if you, don't have, if you get sick, you don't have enough faith. Three weeks later, he was in the hospital. My grandfather went to visit him, and first thing he said, I guess you didn't have enough faith. How ridiculous is that? That's not Bible. Sounds good, but it's not Bible. It's not scriptural. Now more than ever, if you'll play softly, please. There's never been a greater time than the church to show forth our faith in God. We're not going to live by fear. We can't afford to live by fear. Jesus told those disciples, How, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? We have to trust Him. So much of the conversation in the church today and among Christians is about how bad things are, how fearful, fearful we are. But there's never been a greater time than to let our, our, our light shine that we're going to trust God through all of this. Through every mile of the journey, we're going to trust God. Now listen to me. I'm not going to live foolish. I'm not going to walk around that hospital and, and say, show me every room's got COVID. I'm going to walk in and let them sneeze in my face. And the Bible said, don't tempt the Lord your God. I'm not going to live foolish, but I am going to live faithful. And I am going to live by faith. And I'm not going to live by fear. Come on, say amen to me. We need to stop speaking and walking in fear. 
And we need to start speaking and walking in faith. We hear a whole lot of talk about this virus. I mean, it's on every news channel. Turn it on. It's in the radio. It's on the, it's on the you know, the, the newspapers. Everything's about this virus. But we don't hear that much talk about the great physician who's got the power to heal this virus, who's got the power to destroy this virus, who's got the power to heal those that are sick with this virus. We hear a lot of talk about the virus, but not much talk about the great physician, the healer. God, help us not to be like that crowd that all they saw was that dead girl rather than looking at Jesus. Having faith in God. Will you stand, please? I know this COVID virus is real. I, I'm not discounting that. I know, again, Christians who've had it. I know some. I'm sure you don't. You may know some. But what I do know is this. Is I'm not going to live in fear of it. I, I'm not going to let anything. One man said, well, if I get the virus and it kills me, I'll be in heaven. So how can you lose with that? We don't live foolish. We, we, we have to be aware. God gives us common sense. I'm not going to go get a, you know, a, a, a syringe just full of that virus and shoot it in my vein and say it ain't going to hurt me. But I'm telling you, if God can keep a Daniel from the lion's mouth, if God can turn the air conditioner on in a fiery furnace for three Hebrew boys, don't you believe God can't keep His people in a pandemic like this right here today? Come on, lift your hands and let's praise Him tonight. Don't you think God can't still stop the mouths of lions? Don't you think God can't still turn the air conditioning on in the fiery furnace and His children come out on the other side without even the smell of smoke on them? That's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of God we've got to put our faith in today. Come on, saints, let's praise Him tonight. Come on, let's lift our voice to Him tonight. Hallelujah. Don't allow your feelings to lead you. But rather live by faith in God constantly. Have faith in God. If we can believe, Brother Baker, all oh, things are possible. As long as I've got my mind about me, which I don't know how much longer that's going to be. It's not looking good right now. But I got it right now today, most of it. I will never forget the testimony that Brother Baker shared with me more than one time of how his son was in that horrendous accident. And that father believed God to heal his son. The doctors had said, you know, this is, this is not going to end well. This doesn't look good. But in that night, Lord of glory walked in that hospital room. Anybody, anybody believe he still can walk in hospital rooms? He still walks in funeral homes. <laughs> he still walks in churches. Those people in that day had so much faith in God. They said if, if Peter can just pass by his shadow over cast us, we're going to be healed. We need that kind of faith again. These are frightening times for the lost. But they don't have to be for the Christian. Because our faith is not in men. Our trust is not in men. Men can only go, do so much. Men can only go so far. But our faith is going to be in God. I had a, one of my good friends. He's lost. But he's a good man. I talked to him yesterday for a little while and we were talking about this virus and how people are just seized up with fear. Now this is a lost man talking, Brother Zach. He said, I'll tell you one thing, I'm not going to live in fear of it. I am not going to live in fear of this virus. I thought, well, dear God, if a lost man can say that, how much more should Christians be able to say? You see, he's not depending on God to help him. He's depending on other things. Maybe luck. Maybe, you know, maybe, you know, whatever. He's depending on other things to shield him. 
but we have God. And our trust and faith is in Him. And He still does the impossible, Brother Charlie. Woo! Father, thank you tonight for this wonderful privilege to be in your house. Thank you for the wonderful spirit that I feel here. Thank you for the wonderful liberty that we're able to be in tonight. You said where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. God, help our unbelief. God, increase our faith tonight. Help us to build ourselves up in the most holy faith. Help us to pray in faith, to walk in faith, to live by faith, to trust you, dear God, that you are our God, that you are going to see us safe through the storms of life. Help us not to live by how we feel, not to walk by sight, but to walk by our faith in you. And our faith will see us safely across the sea to the other side and will see us safely to the shores of sweet deliverance and will see us into that beautiful city, that place that we call home, that place called heaven. Can you lift your hands one more time tonight? If you're dealing with fear, let's ask God to remove it tonight. The old enemy is trying to, to overwhelm you, to seize you up. Just ask God tonight, Lord, help me. Help me with this fear, God. Help me to have faith in you, dear Lord. Help me not to live by how I feel. Help me not to live by the way it looks or sounds or what it, you know, what it feels like to me, but help me to live by faith in you. If we can believe it, God can do anything for those that love Him. Can we give Him a hand of praise tonight? The Lord wants us to believe. You can be seated just for a moment. I miss the altars, don't you? We're going to get back to these altars. Let's, let's believe God. Let's trust God. Let's don't live like the lost. We're not lost. Let's don't live like sinners live. We don't have to have a whiskey bottle to get through these times. We don't have to have drugs. We don't have to have the things of this world to help us get through this time. Simple childlike faith. Brother Tim Dean, most of you know him. One of my best friends on this earth. He's a man of God. When he was young, he was away from God. He was riding his motorcycle. I believe he was, what, 17, 18 years old? He was riding his motorcycle, and somebody backed out in front of me. He hit that car, and it, he, he was broken up. Took him to the hospital. They had to open him up from here all the way down. Said they had to massage his heart to keep him alive. And the doctors came out and told his family, said, we've done all we can do now. He said, if you're a praying people, then you better pray now because that's the only thing left. Those folks got to pray, and his mom and daddy got to pray, and the church people got to pray, and God healed Brother Timothy Dean. And after God brought him out of that hospital, after, a matter of fact, I believe while he was in the hospital, in that hospital bed, he made things right with God. Later, God would call him to preach, and he's a great man of God today. It was because somebody had faith in God. Just, a, just a, you know, the doctor said, we can't, we've gone as far as we can go. He said, if you're praying, people, you better start praying. And they started praying. And God healed him. And God brought him safely through. He's probably somewhere right now preaching the gospel in that pulpit tonight. What is it in our life that's beyond the power of God? Nothing is beyond the ability and the power of God. He said, according to your faith, let it be unto you. According to your faith. Not his power or his ability, because he can do anything. Can't he, Brother Zach? He can do anything. Let's one more time give him a hand of praise, and we're going to go home. How many is glad you came to church today? Ah, what a wonderful, wonderful time we've had in his house. Let's keep praying for our nation. Let's keep praying for revival. Let's keep praying for the lost, the hurting, the sick, those that are, are those that are sick with this virus. <clears throat> Let's pray for God to destroy this. God can just speak the word and this thing be gone. He can just speak the word and it be gone. Let's pray for God to help 
each other. Pray for your brothers and sisters. And let's practice those things necessary daily to, to build that faith. Faith is a muscle, and it has to be exercised. And if we'll exercise it, it'll grow. And I'm telling you, we need to hear more testimonies among the church people of the things that God's doing. When you hear a testimony of a brother or sister, when you're going through something, boy, I tell you, it encourages your faith, don't it? It helps you. I can't tell you the times we've been facing things and hearing somebody else testify of something God done. And you know, God's no respect to persons. What he done for your brother, he'll do for you. What he done for your sister, he'll do for you. If we can just believe. Let's go forward with faith in God. Brother Zach, if you and Brother Charlie will get ready, let's usher these precious saints of God out. I love every one of you so much. I'm so glad to see you today. And all those watching online, we love and appreciate you as well. And if time stands, the Lord willing, we'll be back on Wednesday night. Let's, let's come. Let's be ready to worship God at 7. And uh, let's live by faith. The Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. Let's love Him. Let's live by faith. Let's see what God can do. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Appreciate you.